This is Ryan Elliott from Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I've been allowed out of the house today. I'm back to let me join my Commonwealth Cruiserweight champion, Chris Billum Smith. Chris, back in the gym, sort of getting back to normal now. How does that feel? Yeah, it's a great feeling. Um, being back in camp with all the lads um, and punching pads again with Shane. Uh, it's been a strange few months and, you know, it's had, it, had its ups and downs. Learned a lot about myself through a strange time, but uh, no, it's great to be back. Now you guys haven't been back in the in the gym long here. We've came down today and, and as always wormed our way into McGuigan gym. Has anything changed since you came back? Are you back to full sort of training yet, sparring, anything like that? Uh yeah, I think we're sparring this week. Obviously we saw our second week back. Um so yeah, it's uh probably yeah, second week back, so probably spar next week and then um yeah, other than that, training's the same, hard work's the same, change as brutal as ever to on us and the circuits are as hard as they've always been, so uh that's, uh, it's good to be back to some form of normality. Now, before you boys got going, you did put the boxing social team through our paces. How dreadful was that to watch for you before we come on to yeah, I mean, boxing? Yeah, it was uh, the pull-ups you both struggled with, and then uh, the, the press-ups were better. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's, there's, you know, work in progress. It's all good. Now, Chris, before we talk about your fight news, I will come on to it. Um, look, it's been a frustrating period for yourself. You had that momentum winning the Commonwealth title late last year. You look set for a defence. You talk about an exciting Bournemouth homecoming. You're also due to be married. Like, How frustrating a time has it been for yourself having to put boxing and personal life on hold as well? Yeah. Um, yeah, like you said, obviously, the, the 2020 was meant to be my year and, and my fiance's year. But uh, with the with Bournemouth show, and then I was going to fight May the 9th, then we are going to get married. But... Uh, now it's looking uh, looking like I'm fighting on the day I was going to get married, which is obviously August the 8th. So uh, I think that's the, the date we're looking at. Um, so you've got to stay positive and, you know, there's a lot of people a lot worse off than I am. But uh, be, maybe uh, the 2021 will be a, a better year or at least the end of 2020. Now let's talk about your fight news by the time this goes out it will be public you're finally going to get in there with Nathan Thorley we've had a, a couple of failed attempts you meant to fight him in May and then July how nice of you to finally have that day at fight camp locked in ready to go back in the ring Yeah, yeah it's great obviously it was meant to be May the 9th um, but it's, I'm glad it's just been postponed slightly by a few months and you know a lot of people have lost big opportunities um, to, to fight and, or to, to fight for titles and stuff I'm just glad I can defend my belt um, on, on August 8th and, and fight Nathan Thorley and get that get back in the ring and, and show what I'm about and show the improvements I've made obviously there's been a, a lot's happened since my last fight I've been been in camp all year anyway um, and even the end of last year but been in camp all that time been out sparring the world number one in Maris Breedis um, and all, all, all those learnings are coming in I feel great this camp confidence is there and uh, yeah I feel really sharp considering we have had three months off now I'm sure you wouldn't have believed me that night you won the Commonwealth title. I told you your first defence would be in August in Eddie Hearn's back garden. That said, we've spoken before about this, this fighting behind closed doors and you honestly told me, you know, I was, I was pretty much there earlier in my career. A lot of my fans weren't allowed in to, to one of my early fights. It doesn't bother you at all, does it? No, I mean, it's going to be different, but it's, it's different for everyone. At the end of the day, mentally, you've just got to prepare yourself and know that you're, you're in there to do a job and all I've got to focus on on, on August the 8th is Nathan Thorley. So... Uh, yeah, like I said, I've I've been there before, and as amateurs, you you fight, you know, in front of not a lot of people, and then even when I box on the Groves Cox undercard, there was barely anyone there. When there was no ring music or anything, at least I'm gonna have the ring ring walk to to get me pumped and, and all those sort of things. But um, got the job done that night, and that's be the same on August the eighth. Now, considering how you, how long you've had to prepare for one opponent, I'm sure you've seen plenty of Nathan. What do you expect him to bring, and what kind of fight do you expect as well on in August when you when you meet each other? Uh, awkward. I think he's, he's tall. He's tall, and uh, surprising how tall he was to make light heavyweight. Obviously, he's come up recently. I expect him to have quick hands and be, and be awkward. But as he's come up, I expect him to be carrying a bit of power. Maybe that he hasn't shown light heavyweight. Maybe the power wasn't there. So I'm expecting a, a hard night's work um, early on. But um, I think the the game plan we've got will, will, will be to uh, to break him down and, and and take him out later on. Now, putting that frustrating period aside, you've, you've got this opportunity in fight camp and to defend your Commonwealth title. What would a win do for you at this point going into the latter part of the year? And you said 2021, you firmly believe, will be your year. What does this do for you, a win on the stage? Yeah, it's uh, obviously there's going to be a lot of eyes on it, I imagine, because people can't go to the shows and it's, uh, it's obviously going to be, be on Sky Sports and people will be craving, have got that craving for sports and their, that love for boxing. 
it's been a while since there's been a show. I think March the seventh was the last Sky Sports show which Fowler boxed on. Um, so yeah, it's been a, a long time coming. So we're, we're looking at what five months after. So um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of eyes on it, which is a great opportunity for me and uh, to, to showcase my skills in front of that many people and show people what I'm about, and then keep pushing on. I mean, I've shown it already on the on the few Sky Sports shows I've I've been on. Uh, what I'm about and uh, just going to keep improving and, and just push on from there Going in next year we, we had a similar conversation last year but with everything obviously being on hold that Bournemouth dream you have I think going into spring next year that all being well with the Nathan Thorley fight you're in a great position with a lot of the domestic guys looking to face each other now to take a big show down there Yeah I mean it could even happen after this one you know when, when shows are allowed back it could fight in August then if we're allowed back in October I'd love to love to do it down there then I mean it would be probably better in the summer down in Bournemouth because We've got the beach and it's it's a seaside town. But if Eddie wants to do it down there on uh, later on in the year, then I know it'd do well. Uh, regardless, we've got a, you know a bit of talent coming through as I spoke about before with Lee Cutler and a couple of the other lads down there. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to bring a show down there. Like I said, I've said numerous, numerous times that there's never been a televised TV show in, in Bournemouth, as far as I'm aware. Um, so yeah, it's uh, a great opportunity. I'd love to make some history and, and bring a show down to the town. Want the boys in the gym here? We haven't seen you guys for a while with everything that's been going do- going on. We've came back, we've seen you all day, sort of getting ready and preparing for various different things. How exciting a time is this for all of you guys? And how sure are you that you're going to have two new world champions in your stable within the coming months as well? Yeah, obviously before lockdown, the the boys and, and Luke was I think scheduled for April seventeenth. It's having a Fortuna for the interim, um, and then Lawrence has got Goaki fight, and that's you know two two world title fights there which I, I believe they're both your favourites going in. And um, it's an exciting time to be surrounded by people like that that are striving for the, the same thing as I am, you know, in the long long term. So to go through those camps with them, especially for Lawrence being my weight category as well. Um, it's Yeah, it's really exciting times. And, and Fowler's obviously looking for the British um, title as well towards the end of the year, I think. So it's exciting times. That's always in the Greens gym. It's no... It's not really a place for mediocrity, so you have to push on and uh, yeah, and keep keep pushing on in every session to to become the best because that's that's the only thing that gets accepted. Let's talk about Lawrence, Chris. Obviously, in your weight class, you spent a lot of time around each other, not only in the ring but away from the ring as well. The Glowatsky fight we still expect to happen in the in the sort of coming months. What do you make of that as a, a stylistic matchup for for Lawrence? Do you think it's a good fight for him? Yeah, I mean Lawrence, I think will. I think he'll catch him and, and I think he'll knock him out. I think Gawaki likes to come forward. He's quite wide and Lawrence can, can meet people with shots because of his, his range and his, his power. Um, I think if he, he keeps it narrow and his punch is you know, cute and, and accurate, then once he catches him, I think he'll, we've seen him obviously wobbled by Breedis, who I know firsthand is very heavy-handed, but I also know firsthand how heavy-handed Lawrence is. So, um, yeah, I think I think that'll be... I think Lawrence will... will figure him out, time him, and, and, and end up uh, flattening him. It's quite astounding for outsiders that Lawrence Acoli still makes Cruz away com- well, fairly comfortably, as comfortable as can be. There is talk, and he's made no secret of the fact he will eventually go up to heavyweight. How much of a handful will he be when he eventually steps up, in your opinion? Yeah, I think I think so. I think um, he'll he'll obviously put on a bit more strength. He'll be stronger than, than he already is. Um, he hits hard enough to, to, to compete at that weight. Um, and he's strong enough and then taking the speed and the, the awkwardness and the agility you know he's taller than a lot of heavyweights anyway so I think he'll be a, a real handful and I'd, I'd love to see him in, in the mix of uh, some of the, the top British heavyweights um, you know the, the likes of, of Dillian White and, and Derek Zora in, in the long run like you know they're big big names but I think Lawrence stylistically is a nightmare for anyone at, at cruiserweight or heavyweight so uh, I'm, I'm excited it's exciting times well, someone else down here in the gym today, he had that break away from the gym given everything that's happened, but he was just starting to settle in. Anthony Fowler spent a lot of time around you boys, we've seen you in there joking and laughing. How's he settled in with everyone? Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, he's, he's Fowler, isn't he? He's the CBD king. He's he's always on his on his blower sorting out his his uh, his deal with the CBD, but he's, uh, he's a top lad. He brings a good, good energy to the gym, a lot of positivity. He's a good lad to have around. Gets a lot of grief on social media because um, he's very active on there but um but no he's uh, he's a top lad and he, he brings a good like i said a good vibe to the gym in the in the short time you've sort of seen anthony working with shane and in amongst you boys have you already started to see the improvements or the slight changes that shane's made to him at all yeah yeah definitely he's uh 
he's improving every day and he's he's one of these people he's like like Campbell you know they've had long amateur careers he's boxing the Olympics and stuff but he's still looking to ways to improve and get even if it's one percent um, and Shane's definitely bringing that out of him and I think you'll see hopefully someone that you know isn't sliding all over the place in his next fight is a bit unfortunate last time out um, but yeah he he'll be he'll be well up there with the you know he'll, he'll win the British title and I'm, I'm looking forward and excited to see where his career goes um, you know we've become quite close as, as he since he's joined the gym we got on really well um we, we chatted a few times you know in lockdown when we we weren't uh, in camp and stuff so but um yeah he's, he's improving all the time and he's he's a hard hard grafter as a you know as a reason his nickname's a machine oh chris i appreciate you've actually got training to get on with you're not here to sit and talk to me outside the gym so i'll leave the final word to you fight camp august the gentleman returns to the ring what can we expect to see from him um improved a lot improved you know a more settled style in, in in a way um just because i've got that confidence now from the experience i've had in the last year um i know i know where i'm at now i know what i've got to do i know what my style is um and i think you'll see a, a much more complete version of me do you think that's what it is with not only the sparring you've been doing with with world-class fighters but winning the commonwealth title on the big stage and we mentioned the performance against react but it was a good performance didn't get the result you told me in the glover fight i have to get the result now you got that do you do you feel that confidence do you feel like you belong now do you think that's it yeah definitely i, I know I'm, I'm one of the best cruiserweights in the country and uh not to sound big-headed but i know that in myself and i've i've got to show that and, and go out there and, and prove that um still even though i've, I've beaten someone you know, decent in Craig Glover, and I've got a Commonwealth title. It doesn't doesn't mean everything. I want to go on to British title and and beyond uh, European. And then, you know, we got some. We people always sp- speak about how good the division is with Tommy McCarthy, Dion Juma, uh, all those names. You know, uh, React Poor, etc. So, it's exciting division. There's no reason to rush into to, to world level when you've got good learning fights, which are exciting. Um, exciting fights for the fans and uh, I believe when, once we all get, get in the ring together as, as we have been you know with, with myself fighting Richard and then Richard fighting Jack Massey me fighting Craig um, Dion fighting Sam Hyde all those sort of fights I think um, it's going to make for an exciting matchup and I know I'll be uh, hopefully be the uh, get the opportunity and prove I'm the last man standing all right, Chris Billum Smith, thank you for coming outside speaking to me. Thank you for torturing me in the gym ever so slightly. I've made it sound like it was a full on work. I was about 10 seconds of exercise. <laughs> Not too much for boxing social. Good luck. I'm sure we'll catch you very soon. And thank you again. Nice one. Cheers, right?